Ladies, we can all agree how much we hate it when Aunt Flo comes to visit every single month. She can just be downright disruptive, obnoxious, and just difficult to deal with. And she always brings the worst gifts that just gets us in a bad mood, can ruin our plans, and even mess up our sheets and clothes. Yes, Aunt Flo is our dreaded period. We hate it when it comes and we hate talking about it. But we often have so many questions about that time of the month. So in this video, I'm going to answer 15 common questions about periods, which I'm sure many of you may have asked yourself before. Now, the first question is why do women get periods? Our period is just one part of the menstrual cycle known as menstruation. It is when the uterus lining, also known as the endometrium, is shed. So shedding would occur when an egg is not fertilized after ovulation. And this can occur every 21 to 35 days. Every woman is different, but the average cycle is actually 28 days. So let's take a look at the menstrual cycle in a little more detail. The menstrual cycle consists of a series of changes that would take place in the female's reproductive system. So specifically the ovaries and the uterus are involved and the cycle is controlled by four main hormones. We have the FSH or follicle stimulating hormone which actually stimulates the growth of the follicles which carry the egg. LH or luteinizing hormone which triggers ovulation that is the release of the egg into the oviduct. Then we have estrogen which is responsible for repairing the uterus lining after your period and finally progesterone which would thicken the uterus lining for pregnancy. So remember if the egg is not fertilized there is no need for the thick uterus lining because pregnancy is not going to occur. Therefore that is why the uterus lining breaks down and that is why we have a period. Now the second question when should girls start their period? Now, the first period is known as the menarch, and this can happen between the ages of 11 to 13 years. But there are some girls who start as early as 8 to 9 years old, and there are a few who also start as late as 16 years old. So it really depends on the individual. So really, there is no need to feel weird if you are an early or a late bloomer. Moving on to question 3. How long should a period last? Now the normal duration for your menstruation period should be between 3 to 7 days. It should never go beyond 7 days. That is a problem. If your period is longer than 7 days, it's abnormal and you should really check with your doctor to find out if there may be some underlying condition. Question 4. Why is my period late? Now we know the main cause for late periods is pregnancy, but there are a number of other reasons why your period may be late or doesn't come at all. And many of these reasons have a lot to do with the changes in hormone levels that control your cycle. So firstly, if you started your period for the first time, it takes some time for the cycle to regulate itself and become consistent. So those first few periods may not come like clockwork. Also, some women tend to have an irregular cycle due to hormonal fluctuations or imbalance. But then there are other factors such as stress, anxiety, extreme exercise, weight changes, and we're talking about drastic weight loss or weight gain, illness, medication, all of these can have an effect on the hormone levels in the body. And then finally, post-pregnancy and breastfeeding mothers Women can tend to experience a delay in their periods due to the high levels of lactational hormones such as prolactin, which can actually stop the hormones that control your cycle. So many times new mothers may not see their period until about 6 to 8 weeks after they stop breastfeeding, although in some cases it may actually take up to 6 months to come. So it really depends. So. If your period is late, it may be because of one of these reasons. Question 5. What is PMS? Now we often associate PMS with a woman who is extremely emotional with bouts of anger and depression. Usually when a woman is acting grumpy and miserable, we tend to jump to the conclusion that she must have PMS. PMS stands for premenstrual syndrome and usually occurs prior to 
and during your period. 80% of women actually complain of PMS. So if you experience PMS, you're not alone. PMS is characterized by mood swings, cramps, bloating, headaches, tender breasts, fatigue and breakouts, and yes, even food cravings. And all of these signs and symptoms are usually brought about by the changes in hormones, especially estrogen, which drops leading up to your period. So ladies, it is natural to feel that you're on an emotional roller coaster before and during your period. So we can only blame it on our hormones. Question six, what causes cramps? Now cramps are one of the most common symptoms of PMS and affects our abdominal region, brain discomfort, and may even cause some women to be in excruciating pain where they may even feel unable to move around comfortably. Well, blame prostaglandins. These are hormone-like chemicals responsible for triggering the vigorous contractions of the uterus in order for the uterus lining to be shed. So that's why cramps can often feel like your stomach area is being twisted and punched or even kneaded like bread dough. And these prostaglandins can also spread and affect our intestines, making the walls of the intestines contract more, often causing that increased feeling to go to the bathroom. So that's why many women often have more frequent bowel movements during their periods. Now, in order to reduce cramps, so here are some common remedies that you can actually try. And these include drinking warm tea, particularly caffeine-free tea, especially peppermint tea, which is known to have menthol, which actually helps relax the uterine muscles, reduces pain, and can also boost your mood. And then ginger tea is known to have anti-inflammatory properties that can reduce the muscle pain and soreness. And drinking water is extremely important during your period to stay hydrated because dehydrated muscle tissues can actually cause increased contractions and worsen your cramps. Also, taking a warm bath and using a heating pad that can help tremendously with relaxing the uterus walls and reducing the constriction of the blood vessels and generally improving blood flow to the uterus. So that would lead to reduced muscular contractions. Now, as surprising as it may seem, exercising is also another way to reduce cramps. Yes, it may seem difficult to get out of bed and do a little workout, but exercising can actually increase the feel-good hormones in our bodies known as endorphins, and these reduce muscular pain and can also improve your mood. So all of these are good remedies that can help alleviate your pain. Now, aside from these remedies, it is important to stay away from dairy foods and carbonated or caffeine-rich beverages and alcohol because these can actually increase muscular contractions and make cramps worse. Now, if you experience really, really bad cramps, so bad that they make you bedridden and stop you from carrying out your normal daily activities, you may need to check with your doctor to find out if there isn't any underlying problem, such as fibroids or even polycystic ovarian syndrome. Question seven, why is my period so heavy? Now, heavy blood flow during your period is known as menorrhagia. Many women experience excessive bleeding, which is more than 60 milliliters of blood loss throughout the duration of the period. Now, this large amount of blood loss can make women use more than six tampons a day or so through their pads every hour or so. So usually women with heavy periods may become anemic due to the excess blood loss. So they may tend to feel very weak and fatigue during their period and they also tend to experience painful cramps and pass large blood clots. But what exactly causes heavy periods? Often menorrhagia can be triggered by hormonal problems especially an overproduction of estrogen and it may also be caused by fibroids or polyps which are non-cancerous growths in the uterus. Now other causes of heavy periods may include the use of blood thinner medications, coming off birth control after using for a while, and then simply recovering after childbirth. Now you can speak to your gynecologist about your heavy periods and see what treatments would be best for you. It may include you having to go on birth control, get a surgical removal of the fibroids that may be causing the heavy periods, or in severe cases, you may even need to remove your uterus, have a hysterectomy. Question eight, why do I get blood clots? 
Now, many women release blood clots during their period, and this is completely normal. So don't be alarmed when these gel-like blobs are passed with your blood. Blood clots contain blood, tissue, and mucus, which often resemble the appearance of cooked strawberries, and they tend to be passed when the period is heavy, usually in the first couple days. Now, blood clots occur when the uterus lining shed large amounts of blood very quickly. So normally during the period, coagulants, which are blood clotting agents, are released to prevent the blood vessels which are in the uterus lining from actually continuing to bleed. But when the blood is flowing so fast, the clotting occurs fast as well. So that is what leads to these blood clots. Now, blood clots bigger than the size of a quarter and being passed frequently may be cause for concern. They could possibly indicate some medical conditions such as fibroids or even endometriosis. So you may need to seek medical advice if you believe your clots are too big and too many. Question 9. Why does period blood smell? Now, most of us can become very self-conscious about our smell during that time of the month. The strong odor that often comes with our period has a lot to do with pH changes taking place in the vagina. Normally, the vagina is an acidic place, but blood is alkaline, and we know that naturally blood has a smell. So when blood is shed from the uterus through the vagina, along with the pH changes, the bacteria and mucus present in the blood contributes to the strong smell. And the older the blood is, the smellier it will be. Hence why you should change your pads regularly. Now, if the period blood smells very fishy, it may be a sign of bacterial vaginosis if the smell is accompanied with itching and painful urination. So you may need to check with your gynecologist. Question 10. Is it safe to use feminine wipes to keep fresh? Now, during your period, you will tend to feel more icky and smelly, so looking for ways to keep fresh would be important to you. Now, feminine wipes and washes are okay to use if they are pH balanced. Some wipes, which are not pH balanced, can actually upset the natural pH balance of the vagina, which is between 3.8 to 4.5. So when that happens, this can encourage fungal growth, such as yeast infections, or even abnormal bacterial growth. So just remember, the vagina is self-cleansing, so it is not necessary to even use wipes or special washes to help keep it fresh. Just be sure to take regular showers to keep clean and stay clear from douching. Using soaps to clean out the vagina can definitely increase the risk of yeast and bacterial infections. Question 11. How often should I change my pad or tampon? Now, to maintain freshness on your period and prevent bacterial infections, changing your pads and tampons often enough is important. Pads should be changed as often as necessary. You don't want blood to be overflowing and leaking from your pad, especially if you have heavy periods. Now, in terms of tampons, they should be changed every 4 to 8 hours, and it should never exceed 8 hours. Leaving in a tampon too long can actually increase your chances of toxic shock syndrome, which brings me to the next question. Question 12. What is toxic shock syndrome? Toxic shock syndrome is quite a rare medical condition caused by bacterial toxin infection from Staphylococcus aureus. Although the number of cases of toxic shock syndrome are usually quite low, there is a high risk of developing this condition if you use super absorbent tampons and keep them in too long beyond 8 hours. So some of the signs and symptoms of toxic shock syndrome include high fever, rash, vomiting, diarrhea, headaches, and even low blood pressure. And in severe cases, the infection can actually lead to death. So it is wise to make sure that you don't buy those tampons which are super absorbent and you try not to keep them in too long. Question 13. What else can I use during my period? Now, although pads and tampons are the most commonly used feminine products, many women may be curious to find out what alternatives can be used. There are quite a number of reusable products that claim to collect blood flow up to as many as 12 hours. These include menstrual cups such as the Diva Cup, which like tampons have to be inserted into the vagina to collect the blood. Then there are also menstrual panties and even pants, 
which have been tried and tested by some women and have proven to get them feeling fresh and dry for a reasonable amount of time. And another product on the market is the sea sponge, which can also be inserted into the vagina instead of tampons. Sea sponges claim to be all natural and chemical free, but some studies show that they may not be the safest alternative to use because of the presence of sand, grit, and even bacteria. So there's a good side and a bad side to these alternative products. The good side is that they're reusable and claim to be long lasting, but the downside of them are that they're expensive and they possibly can cause leaks. So at the end of the day, it all depends on you, your preference and what suits your pocket. If you're willing to pay up front the high price and be able to reuse them multiple times, which in fact may actually save you some money in the long run. Question 14. Can I get pregnant on my period? Now this is probably one of the most common questions asked by many women. Now as gross and messy as period sex may sound, it has often been said that during your period is the safest time to have sex if you do not want to be pregnant. This is somewhat true since your period falls within one of the infertile windows of your cycle, as you can see in the diagram. Now during your period, the hormone levels are low and the egg is lost along with the blood. So you may think no egg means no chances of fertilization. However, sets near the end of the period can still pose a risk and may lead to pregnancy. This is because directly following the period, the egg is maturing and preparing to be released in ovulation. And if you have unprotected sets near the end of the period, the sperm can actually survive up to seven days. So if by chance ovulation comes a little earlier than scheduled and sperm is still present inside of you, there is a possibility for the egg to be fertilized. So the better time of the month to avoid pregnancy may be those few days leading up to your period rather than during your period. Or to be safer, just use birth control. Now on to the final question, question 15. When will I stop getting periods? Now when a woman starts to see her period less and then eventually stops menstruating altogether, it usually means she has reached menopause. For many women this may seem to be a time to rejoice because there's no more need to worry about bleeding every month. But with menopause, many women still experience mood swings along with other uncomfortable symptoms such as vaginal dryness, hot flashes and even sleep problems. Now the average age for most women for the onset of menopause is between the ages of 45 and 55 years, but some can reach menopause earlier in their 30s or even early 40s, and others may reach it as late as their 60s. So it really all depends on the individual. If there are any questions that I didn't answer in this video, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. If you found this video helpful, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that notification bell.